What's going on out there, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Caveman Mods. You know, it's been a while. I ain't put out no content. I've been busy doing stuff. Hard to record. Try to do stuff at the same time. Uh, stick around. I'm going to show you how we got to this point. Well, I ain't going to show you, but I'll tell you how we got to that point because I didn't record anything on getting to this point. So, a uh, little bit of a backstory here in a second, but before we get to that, also, do me a favor like, comment, subscribe, share. I know I don't put out content as much as I used to, and I ain't really doing it on a regular basis anymore, but uh, that's mainly because I'm just busy doing stuff, man. I got to be, uh, you know, that guy that fixes everything around the house, fixes everything on this on the weekends, and, you know, I, I didn't want my YouTube channel to be centered around maintenance on a truck, and nine times out of ten, I'm working on this, but every now and again, I get to play with this, and, uh, you know... With this right here, I mean, it's a lot going on, getting it to that point, and try to do it all in a timely manner. Like I said, hard to do with holding the camera and editing videos and all this stuff. If I spend all my time working on this, I ain't got time to edit videos, and I'm out driving a truck all week, so I'll put out content when I can, guys. Anyways, how we got to this point right here? It's flipped around. This is what it looks like without the front clip on. Still gotta take the bumper off. Should have did that before I took the front clip off. But yeah, how we got to this point? Well, a little bit of a story here, but we're doing a couple things. How we got to this point right here is because went to a car show, put it all together, put the car all together. You know, I had a bunch of little odd and end things I had to straighten out and and rushed to get finished up but we went to a car show and i did it one friday uh, i don't remember the day it was the beginning of the month this month but ended up putting all the little finishing touches on this together in a day which was a lot i had to kind of move every wire around under the hood now because where i originally had it all laid out I was getting close to the exhaust and so i had to move all that stuff um and then like i said finish up a bunch of little odd and end things in under the hood and got the car finished up ready to uh, go to this car show it took me nearly the entire day i worked on it until about three o'clock in the morning thrashing on it well got it all done fired it up and uh we we're ready to go to the car show the next morning so went to the car show Every, everything went off there without a hitch until we got ready to leave and the car fired up started running like crap drive not even really across the parking lot where we were at for the car show and uh yeah it just kind of shut off didn't want to run no more come to find out long story short I, I left the ground wire loose on the back of the head for the injectors and uh yeah that will prevent your injectors from squirting fuel so took me a minute to figure that out found it and got it all back together took off from there come on to the house we get home and uh tell my wife man hey you know the, the car made its maiden voyage without a hitch pretty much uh let's go get something to eat in the car and so we took off in the car uh got down the street and i pulled into a store to get something real quick and left the car sitting there running it's got electric fans everything so i mean it it'll stay cool uh come back out and take off and a little puff of smoke come out from under the hood it smelled like burnt electrical immediately pulled back into a parking spot and jumped out trying to figure out what it was well come to find out it was this here this goes to my engine fan it burned up on me uh the fan it burned up and uh yeah it melted a couple wires so no big deal advanced auto was around the corner pull over there and uh bought a new fan changed it in the parking lot took about 20 minutes no big deal uh just ran it straight for the time being to get us where we were going to get something to eat and come back to the house. Hold on. One second. So on the... oh. Well, we ended up changing that in the parking lot, like I said. No big deal. Got that done pretty quick. Took off from there to go get something to eat, and we were nearly there, maybe about a mile or so away. The car really started running like crap, and uh, it just started backfiring spitting sputtering i didn't know what was going on with it uh pull into the place where we were actually we stopped 
somewhere else to even get something to eat. We didn't even make it to where we were planning on going. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sitting there idling and you can hear it squeaking. Almost sounded like a belt squeak, but you could distinctly tell that it wasn't. Uh, and it was too consistent, just eat, 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 you know what I mean? So I knew that it wasn't the belt, and it was something under the hood, something in the block. So went ahead and shut it down, and like a dummy, I drove it home from there after we got done eating. Of course, it didn't get any better. It just got much worse. Uh, <clears throat> we made it home. Held good oil pressure the entire way. Uh, but I just parked it in the driveway that night because it was getting late, and it was dark out at that point, so... Next morning, I pulled in the garage. First thing I did was pull the valve covers, pulled the passenger side first because that's where it sounded like the noise was coming from. And I'll show you here what we ended up doing. Yeah, you know, I can't find my GoPro right now, guys. So this video is being filmed on my phone, but I'll find it later. So this is your normal roller rocker that I had on here. And I, I honestly don't know who makes these. Uh, another 1.7 rockers They're made in USA But yeah, there's nothing else no other markings on it, but this is what your typical roller rocker looks like well This is what this roller rocker looks like um, Yeah, that's where my problem was coming from uh, That's from driving at home Which I will say I wasn't maybe about three miles four miles from my house but yeah big difference here how that happens i don't know and these are pretty stout for roller rockers uh, i will say the rest of it is here the most of the rest of it i had snapped that that pin right there that dowel whatever you want to call it the shaft that this roller sits on yeah it snapped it clean how you do that, <clears throat> kind of beyond me. Um, got into that side, the valve looks fine. The head looks fine. There's a tiny piece missing that I can't find. It's nowhere in the head. Uh, hard to do with one hand here, guys. Let me get this off. I'll get right back to you. Make sure you don't lose that. All right. Got it off. Uh, so it was on this valve right here. That's the intake valve. That's the exhaust valve. Um, I will say that somewhere along the line, and I don't know if it's because of the missing piece on this rocker arm that was right here, but the lobe on this cam is gone. This thing doesn't even move maybe a quarter to a somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch there's no movement hardly at all out of this push rod here uh, so we ate the lobe off of this can of the cam on the exhaust side and broke the intake rocker arm uh, that being said now that there is now that that's been established uh, we ran metal through the motor and in my mind now that that's happened uh, I'm going to tear it down, obviously, but i um, not going to rebuild this motor for this car. Uh, I am going to keep the motor, rebuild it for something I'm probably going to end up putting in for my wife. We'll tone it down a lot. Uh, but yeah, this block right here is not going back in this car, mainly because what I'm trying to do here, this block can't handle. It can't handle half of what I'm trying to put into this. So if this on its lowest setting is about 1200 horsepower, somewhere in there with the boost and all that you know the only way to get it under that is just disconnect the turbos and that, that's pointless what would i do that for so uh, you know it's the two bolt main block it can handle maybe 800 horsepower i mean and that's pushing the limits uh i mean this block's only good for ominously a good conservative 600 horsepower to be reliable anything more than that and it's literally pushed to its limits you can't do a whole lot out of a two bolt main so uh got a new 454 block <clears throat> It's a four bolt main. Uh, it's Mark four block. So everything I got on this block will transfer over to that one. Currently got it at the machine shop down in Nashville called Shacklets. 
Uh, we're born at 30 over. Uh, I already got a four and a quarter crank. Oh, my wife is sitting out over there. That big box she's in front of. She doesn't want to be on camera right now. Uh, so that box that she's in front of right there, that's full of parts. That's everything that's going into this is brand spanking new. Um, <clears throat> I guess I can kind of give you an idea of what we're going to put into this here in a second. But So this block's coming out. Everything's going to get transferred over. Obviously, keeping my head, that's a $3,000 set of heads. Uh, we're going to run with the intake. Oil pan already has the bungs on it for the the oil drain from the turbos. So that'll switch over. Uh, the only thing that we're changing that we're not using on this block is the harmonic balancer. I got an Innovations West harmonic balancer, SFI approved. Um, it's buried in that box. I'll show you in a second. But I also got a new flywheel, uh, also SFI approved. Uh, let's see, everything else we're going to run with. Um, the block that I'm going to start working on here soon, as soon as I get it back from the machine shop, it's bored 30 over. Uh, I got 23cc dome top pistons with one valve relief. Uh, should have plenty of clearance for these heads because the ones that are in this one actually right now are 30,000 or 30 cc's. Um, but yeah, so the crank that I'm putting in it is a forged crank. It's a 4 250 stroke. So we're stroking the motor. The push rods I'm putting in it are H beam push rods. Both are from Eagle Forged Assemblies or Eagle Assemblies, whatever. Uh, the pistons are Icon Forged Pistons. Uh, I got Seal Powers uh, rings. We're going to gap the rings. I got a gap tool to gap them and everything uh we're gonna build this right just the bearings for the mains and the rods cost me over 300 bucks for this so yeah i'm putting racing bearings in it uh they're actually the bearings that i used are what are they called king yeah they're king racing bearings the x xp something yeah they're they're really good stuff uh they're actually black the like anodized and well, I don't know what all they did to them it's all this scientific crap that I don't know but to make this easier we just went ahead and pulled the whole front clip which I got sitting over here this is the stand that that other block come on but yeah front clips over here I will tell you that I did find this a little bit of rot right here in the corner and it looks like they got a patch panel on the outside of that that ain't cool we'll eventually get that fixed but I ain't worried about that right now concerned about this so we're gonna get this all fixed up guys and uh yeah i'm gonna do probably a build video or two on putting that block together at least i'm gonna try to uh i gotta find my gopro because i got the stand for it but this thing's gonna be a monster now so this is 468 462 somewhere in there because this is just board four or 30 over and it has the 400 or 4.0 stroke so we're going with the Ford and 250 stroke. Uh, we're going to turn this into a 489 stroker. And I think what else? Oh, yeah. The camshaft that I'm putting in it. Here, get you over here. So this is the cam that's going in it. <clears throat> this is from Cam Motion. This is a custom ground cam specifically for this particular application. Also, my head gaskets. These are from SCE. Uh, everybody's telling me to go with multi-layer steel head gaskets, simply because it's steel, but there's some drawbacks to those, and I'm gonna run with these. This is multi-layer steel on the outside, but it has coating, it's all glued together, everything. And then this right here is firing. Each one of these cylinder bores have a fire ring in them. So these are expensive. Just these gaskets alone were 200 bucks a piece. Uh, yeah, those, those are going to be badass in there. Uh, I will say that there is a whole lot more in this box. There was, there was no budget in mind when putting this thing together. That I will say. Uh, nothing but the best parts that I can come up with at this point in time anyways. Mainly because 
it necessarily ain't the best parts across the board, but the best that I can get a hold of because everything right now is on back order and I'm not waiting months and months on end to put this thing together because we're getting married in August. Or no, I'm sorry, October. I already forgot the yeah, I already forgot. I already forgot the date. Look, see, we got her over here to check me on that. Uh, yeah, we're getting married October 28th, and I need this car ready for that. So, well, I guess I'll put a knot on it. You can get a good idea of this specific harmonic balance here. It's got the timing marks all the way around it, like it should. Uh, the way we're doing this block, the new one, uh, it's internally balanced at 10,000 RPMs. Uh... Got, of course, no balance on the crank and the or the uh, harmonic balancer dampener at this point. It's not a harmonic balancer if it doesn't have any weight. It's a dampener at that point. And the flywheel also is no weight, no balance, whatever, because it's balanced on the crank. Uh, getting the the H beam rods, pistons, everything balanced. Uh, so yeah, it's fully thought out process and how to do this and make sure it's correct, but. There's a lot more other stuff I got going on with this. So, anyways, that was the harmonic balancer. Uh, we're now changing the distributor. Also, with this one that has the MSD mag drive distributor, or not mag drive, but magnetic pickup distributor. Uh, we're getting rid of that. I think that's probably one of the biggest issues that I was having with this is I couldn't control the timing with the ECU. So now we're going with the dual sync distributor from Holly. Now I'll we'll have full timing control. Uh, and I got tons of other stuff in here. I don't have the bearings or the pistons, rods, or anything right at the moment. ARP bolts for... I don't even know what these ones are for. These ain't for the heads. I got these ones that are in the heads over here. So we're going to run with those ones because they were only in this block and they wasn't... Never ran, really. I mean, I only drove it down the street twice on this car for over a year and I've only driven it twice really sucks all good it's fun this project keeps me busy keeps me out of trouble I'm trying to put this back guys so yeah sorry about all that <laughs> that's where we're at with the car um, kind of the last ditch effort to get it put back together for the wedding so we can drive away at the end of the wedding and look cool because that was the whole idea of purchasing the car at least the main idea behind it starting out uh well it changed because the issues that ended up coming up with the car but currently since i'm waiting for the block to come back and i can't do anything until i get the block back i need to finish up the exhaust on this side this is the driver's side uh, the exhaust runs down and then it cuts off right there. So, I mean, it's facing that way. Not on this side. This side's ran out all the way out the back. Pastor side's ran out all the way. Down through. Doing, you can see it right there. Dumps right before the rear axle. Uh, all that stuff in the bags over there. That's the pistons, crank, everything that come out of the other block that I already got. It was actually a fresh rebuild. It was a fresh rebuild, but the guy who ended up having it built never come back to pick it up. And a buddy of mine, who's a partner, a friend of mine, he has a shop down in Nashville and he's partners with somebody else. Well, the guy he's partners with had a block sitting there and nobody was using it. So I got a fresh rebuilt block for 500 bucks and I'm spending more money on machine work than I am the block. But for what I'm trying to do, uh, it has to be precise. So. This is going to be a lot of work ahead, but I mean, it's something that I can put together in a day, I believe. But currently right now, since I'm not working on it, can't do nothing really other than the exhaust on this side. Uh, I'm working on the suspension. So right now, I'm putting coilovers. I already got this one put together. It's just sitting there. I'm putting coilovers on the front. This is the driver's side. I got this side done first because... 
I'm going to jump to the other side here in a minute, but I wanted to get this all put back together and out of the way so I can finish the exhaust. But, yeah, I don't know how good you can see that down there. But Viking coilovers. This is the Berserker series. I got big block springs in it. They're 550 pound springs. And this is the passenger side. I had to put that rubber piece in there. I'll show you what I did it on this one. Yeah, I had to put those in there to lift the front end up because it sat so low, the upper A-arm wanted to hit the exhaust right in here. Right here. It was no room right there. So uh, that's part of the reason why I went ahead and jumped to the coilovers because that was kind of ghetto rigged with the rubber in there to separate it and actually made it ride like crap. Another thing. You see this spindle, it's actually sitting straight, kind of parallel with the car, you know? And this side, it sits kicked back this way, this angle. I'm pretty sure you can see it. But I needed to change that, so once I lifted it up, it was prevalent that you could really see it in the stance on the car. So on the upper control arm, this bar right here where it connects to the frame is cammed. You can flip it and it brings it out. So that's what I'm going to end up doing to this one. I already did it to that side. But I got to pull all this back apart and I'll take the spring out and put the coil over in this side. And then sometime today, maybe here in the next couple of hours, the UPS will be here with the rear. And I got UMI connections all for the back to hook it all up back here. Uh, the frame, I believe it comes with the frame bracing or the shock tower bracing. It, it goes from the shock tower down to the frame where the lower control arm is at. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all I'm doing with the car right at the moment. Got a whole bunch of new parts here. Got all the new parts at the machine shop right now getting balanced. Uh, things go well I should have that all back by the end of next week and probably next weekend I'm gonna be slapping this thing together uh, as soon as I get the block back here I got to clean it up best as possible uh, get it all prepped oiled down that way it doesn't get any kind of corrosion or rust in it and then immediately start putting it together so it's gonna be a pretty big thrash on trying to get that together as fast as I possibly can so I'm gonna try to record some content about me building this block but I can't promise anything guys it's this is not easy doing all this and it's just a pain in the butt i gotta try to keep this place clean and organized enough where i can work out of here and you know doing this all day every day this is my money maker so all week i'm driving it got stuff i gotta fix on it on the weekends and when i'm done with that i get to play with this and so that's where we're at uh Pretty much my latest update on everything here. Still haven't done anything to the truck yet. Um, I got the U-bolts to bolt the headache rack on. Found those. That's pretty much where we're at, guys. Uh, don't know if I told you, I did put stacks on this. It's got some eights on it, and I put a new front bumper. Uh, it's dirty right now, but yeah. Got the bumper, right there. Bumper kind of like the one I seen in that video my intro videos or the beginning of my videos you know introduction on some of them not all of them but yeah oh yeah you know that's one other thing changed all the lights on the top i put those mini watermelons up there not easy to do um and trying to record and do it at the same time pain in the butt guys uh so that's where we're at got the cherry picker put together in preparation for the motor to get done as soon as it gets here, guys, we're going to hammer on this and get it fa finished up as, as fast as I possibly can because I need to get it back in the car and hopefully run them within the next couple of weeks. Uh, my goal is to try to get this together and go to Hot Rod Power Tour this year. That'll be my first time doing that. It's something I've always wanted to do, and that's what I want to do. Um, I think I have definitely come to the conclusion that I've probably not going to be drag racing this as much as i wanted to initially uh and main reason behind it is that it's 
I just want it to be a pretty awesome car that I go to car shows and just make people kind of wow, you know, like, that's pretty awesome. I like to see people's reactions, I like talking to people about it, and that's the main reason behind it. It's just something to talk about, guys. Uh, just look at it, dude. It's badass. Would you look at that? Just look at it. And if I had it, I would just look at it. That's all I do anyways. I just look at it. <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, thanks for sticking around. If you hung out this long, do me a favor again. Like, subscribe, comment, share. And let me know if you want to see me do a, a kind of a build series on that block. Um, other than that, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. You know, appreciate your supporting me and everything. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless you.